Go, 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 go. We're going to debate whether the Quran or the Bible is the Word of God. The first thing that I want to say is the Quran isn't the Word of God because the Quran was made for the desires of Muhammad. In Surah 33, 37, it talks about uh, the adopted son. And basically, there's a surah there that, that kind of says that the adopted son is no longer the adopted son of Muhammad, so he could marry his adopted son's wife. So this like making sexual desires for Muhammad in the Quran. So I can't accept this as the word of God. I can't accept this as the word of God. Secondly, there are... <coughs> There's a misunderstanding in the Quran about the Trinity. If the Quran is the word of God, why has it got the Trinity misunderstood? In Surah 4171, Surah 573, and Surah 5116, the Quran seems to think that Christians believe in three gods. That's not true. Christians believe in one God and three persons. So the Quran has misunderstood what the Trinity is. So if, if the Quran is true, if the Quran is true, why does it misunderstand what the Trinity is? Secondly, the Quran is borrowed from ancient religions and ancient texts. If it's the Word of God, why is it plagiarized? It's kind of like a DJ. You know a DJ does a bit of mixing, a mixing here and a mixing there. Well, the Quran does a lot of mixing, mixing with other uh, other texts. So we have uh, the, the Tayyamam, in Surah 443, copied from the Jewish scripture, the Talmud, the breathing life into birds in Surah 2, 260, 349, 5110, copied from the Coptic books. We have Horace uh, Azel, a story in Surah 44, 54, learned from the foreigners in Mecca. We have Harut and Marut in 2, 102, from the Armenian books. Harut and Marut are in control of wind and rain. Allah's throne above the water in Surah 11.7 from the Jewish tradition. Malik, the ruler of hell in Surah 43.7.7 from the Jews. Uh, Malik, uh, the Malik book called Malik Leviticus 18.21. The seven heavens in the Quran, Surah 2.29, 41.12, adopted from the Sanskrit scripture of the Hindus. And Mary giving birth under the trunk of a tree in Surah 19.23, copied from the Gospel of Infancy and the Apocryphal Christian Gospel. So how can the, the Quran be the Word of God when it's like a DJ mixing the music, getting all its stuff from different books here and there, borrowing? And that's why often he was charged with plagiarism. He was charged for nicking books and he had to answer it all the time. We can go on and on and on. Infant Jesus uh, talking in Surah 46, Surah 346, 1930, 31, 1933, copied from the Gospel of Infancy. Boy, he's a DJ and I have one minute friends. left. Minute left. We have Jesus not killed, Allah lifted up to Jesus in Surah 355, copied from the Gospel of Barnabas. He's some DJ. The story of Solomon and Sheba, Surah 21, 78, 82, copied from the Haggadi, a Jewish scripture. Uh, Kings 10.1, the original Quran is kept in heaven, Surah 43.4, borrowed from the Talmud, says that the Torah is preserved in tablet in heaven. He's getting his stuff from other religions and other books. And I've given you tons of information there, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum, Rasulullahi and my second product in humanity, greetings you all. The debate today between you and Jason here is about the corruption or contradictions in the Quran or in the Bible. Or the Quran or the Bible, which one is the word of God? Because these people have been coming here for years now, attacking, the, uh, uh, attacking Islam and saying lies about the Quran, saying that the Quran is corrupted, there is only one Quran. Well, they cannot prove no proof. <laughs> they cannot provide a proof. As you can see, the five minutes is getting his information from the internet. You know, the Bible says proof all things. First, first Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse, verse number 21, proof all things. Whatever I'm going to say, 
book be secondary source. You understand? So for the book to be to claim to be the uh, word of God, it has to pass or go through three criteria. First, it must must it must make a claim that it is the word of God. Second, it must not have any additions or deletions. And third, it must not contain any contradictions. The Quran has passed all these tests, but the Bible fa Bible failed miserably. The Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran, if you go to the Quran, both statements, you will never find such verses in the Bible. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, verse number 9. Inna nahu nazal na zikra wa inna nahu la We have without doubt sent out the message, I the Quran, and we will assuredly guard it from corruption. You will never find that in the Bible. Furthermore, in the Gross Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 82. أَفَلَا يَتَنَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَا كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِقَارِ اللَّهِ لَا وَجُرُ فِي إِكْلَى فَانْكَثِيلًا Do they not consider the Quran carefully? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein many a contradiction. This is the Quran. You will never find that in the Bible. Several verses in the Bible. In the Quran, Allah is challenging mankind. Furthermore, in the Eri, the Golas Quran, it is mentioned in Surah Isra, Chapter number 17, verse number 18. It said, Kul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding Muhammad Salam. Say, Kul. Say, tell them that he come at him in Suwal Kinu. Allah, I have to miss the Hazal Quran that if the whole of mankind and the kings, if we are to gather together and produce a lack of this Quran, Allah said, La Yatuna be misli. They will never be able to produce like their offer. Even if they backed up each other with help and support. You can never produce like the Quran. And this challenge has stood for more than 1400 years. The whole world is challenged to produce the like of the Quran and it has to be able to produce it. Furthermore, I'll come to the Bible. We are warming up. One, one hour, we are warming up. Further, if you read the God of Quran, it is mentioned in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 10, 7. It says that this Quran is not such as can be produced by other than Allah. On the contrary, it is a confirmation of the revelation that went before it, i.e. the Torah, the Torah, and the Injil, the Gospel, and the full explanation of the book, wherein there is no doubt from the Lord of the Alameen, from the Lord of mankind, Jinn, and all that exists. That is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Furthermore, one more verse, the Quran, it is for the mention of the Quran, in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 38, it said, Or do they say, He, that is Muhammad, peace upon him, has fought it, has fought the Quran? Allah said, bring them a surah that is a chapter like it, like it and call upon whomsoever you can besides Allah if you are truthful. Challenge upon challenge, there's the Quran. 140 surahs. For two and 40 surahs, 6,206 verses. No addition, no deletion, no contradiction. I challenge you. You got to show me contradictions. But the Bible, when you go to the Bible, it's a five minutes yet. No, you got a minute left. We don't have to do that. Don't go. You can take that because I want to start first again. Okay. Come to the Bible. Come to the Bible now. Well, you got contradictions in the Quran. Then we are here. Good source. Uh, you got contradictions in the Quran. It says uh, uh, the, the creation was in six days in Surah 50 58. Yeah. Then it was in eight days in Surah 41 9 12. So which is it? The day of judgment was 1,000 ages in Surah 32.5 and then it's 50,000 in Surah 74. So there's two contradictions before we even begin. I could give you more contradictions. We've got more contradictions. Uh, man created out of a mere clot of congealed blood in Surah 9, 60, 960 verse 2. Yet, it says we were created man from sounding clay. So was it clot or clay? From mud molded into shape, Surah 15, 26. Then it says the similitude of Jesus before Allah is that, that is that of Adam. He created him from dust. Then said to him, be, and he was, Surah 3, 56. So was it clot? Was it clay? Was it dust? But does not man call to man that we created him before out mm. of nothing? Surah 19, 67. Yusuf Ali, also Surah 52, 35. And then he says he was created man from a sperm drop. 
Behold, the same man becomes the open disputer, Surah 16.4. So here we have, uh, man is created out of a clot, out of sperm, out of dust. Kind of, Allah doesn't kind of know how to make his mind up. So I could go on to that. But he says, bring a surah like it. We have brought a surah like it. The satanic verses. The satanic verses deceived Muhammad. He was deceived. So the Quran can be uh, mimicked. Also Psalm 23 and 1 Corinthians chapter 13 are far, far, far more literary and superb and greater than the Quran in any shape or form. The next thing is, if the Quran is the word of God, why is it built on a false prophet? It says, Muhammad ordered the murder of Fatna and her friend for singing songs of satire against him in Ibn Ishaq, page 51. Another young girl named Sarah was trampled to death mercilessly by a mounted soldier dispatched by Muhammad after she insulted him, 551. It says, Amza Blint Marwan was slaughtered by one of Muhammad's soldiers solicited by him. Her crime, writing poetry that insulted him, she committed, she commented, after hearing the deed was done, two goats were not but their heads together as her passing. Page 676. Six. If he is a true prophet, what's he going around getting people assassinated for? So the Quran can't be the word of God because it's built on a false prophet. Another example, when Muhammad went into the cave, he wanted to commit suicide. Oh, he's giving it, he's going crazy, okay? He had to, if there was a national health, he'd have run to the hospital. What's that all about? No prophet was like that. It's a crazy prophet and not a basis for having a revelation. The other thing as well, it says the Quran was revealed in, uh, by Gabriel to Muhammad on sticks, stones and bones. Where's the sticks, stones and bones? If the Quran is the word of God, where is the evidence of the sticks, stones and bones? I'll let it go, because he let me You see how crafty they are, we know them here. You see, we are debating, you know, digress. If you can digress, we can come when we finish. Violence in the Quran or in the, or in the Bible. Then you'll begin one away. You know, if you read the Bible, from Genesis Revelation, you desist from attacking Islam. You see, that's what they do. We have, we have a topic here, the man is digressing. Let's go to the Bible. You see, I've got so many Bibles here. Last time, Bob, I asked Bob, he said, I believe in all of them. I said, look, you believe in all of them? Yes. I said, but here, this Bible said, King James Basel, that is called for I, I mean, they said, this one is not that authentic. And John 3.16, they took it out. For God's soul of the world, that he gave his own because son, that whosoever believed him, shall not perish. You know, it's here, they took it out. The Christian scholars. Yeah. yeah, you never signed the Quran. Quran, you see, one, 114 surahs, as I said, 6,206 verses. But look at the Bible. Do you believe in all this Bible? I'm asking you, do you believe in this? So many Bibles. Look at them, chopping and changing, adding and deletion. Let's go to the Bible. I said the Bible. The Bible is replete in contradictions. It cannot be the word of God. No way. Now I'm going to ask questions, and the answer I'll be giving will give you a contradiction. First, the question is: Is God omnipotent? Is God powerful? The Bible said yes, and then no. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in Jeremiah, chapter number 32. Verse number 27, God said, Behold, behold, I am the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Yeah, God said in the verse, He's omnipotent, so powerful. And in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 26 says, He said, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With God, no, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. God is all powerful. But if you go to the, the book of Judges, chapter number one, verse number 19 said, And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. A blatant contradiction. Next question. Has anyone seen God? The Bible said yes and no. Incredible. 
these are the type of contradictions we want to see from the Quran. Has anyone seen God? The Bible says yes, said yes, and then no. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number 18. No one has seen God at any time. No one has seen God at any time. Same message repeated in the first verse of John, chapter number four, verse number 12. No one has seen God at any time. And in the book of Exodus, chapter number 33, verse number 20, God said to Moses, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. So according to John, first vision of John, and the book of Exodus, no one has seen God at any time. But let's go to in the book of uh, Genesis, chapter number 32, verse number 30. In this verse, he said, he said, um, and Jacob was with the penny and said, For I have seen God, for I have seen God, God face to face, and my life is preserved. Also, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 33, verse number 11, it says that, he said, And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man would speak to his friend. So, in this verse, verse I've forget, the Bible said, People have seen God, no one has seen God. Which one is it? Furthermore, if you read the Bible, next question is, what was the last? What were the last words of Jesus before Jesus was crucified? According to the, uh, this, the Bible, what were his last words? Here us also contradictions. The contradiction here is between the Gospel of Luke versus the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter number twenty-six. No, Gospel of Luke, chapter number twenty-three, verse number forty-six said. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. According to Luke, the last words of Jesus were, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. But according to John, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 19, verse number 30, it said, It is finished. So which one is it? Was it, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit? According to Luke, oh, it is finished. According to John, a blatant contradiction. Next, what can second God? Okay, we'll deal with the uh, uh, contradictions. You'll have to remind me what they are. I, I'm, no. I'm a bit tired. So, uh, no, 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 what you video, video, I can watch your video and check them out. No, I come no, and challenge you. No, no one can say God and live. Yeah? But no, they, they are powerful one. Uh, God, if you read John Calvin, and I'd encourage you to read John Calvin, he talks about that God, God used anthropomorphic language. So, when it says that God is all powerful, that is helping us understand that God is all-powerful. But when he says that God could not move the chariots, that's just language so that we can understand what's happening. It's not saying literally that God cannot stop chariots, because God is all-powerful. So that's the first one. When he says about seeing God, no one can see God, only Jesus, in his glory. In his glory. But Jacob, when he saw God, he saw him, anth again, anthropomorphic. It, it was like angels. Right, so does it, when you're saying seeing, you're, you're, you're making them as if they're exactly the same understanding as seeing God. It's not the same. The seeing God in his full glory, which no man can see, only Jesus. The second one, okay. So, so. And, and then uh, there's, the seeing of Je the, there's the seeing of God uh, on an anthropomorphic level where, we, where Jacob, for example, wrestled with God in the break of day so that he could understand a little bit of God, but it's not that he sees the full glory of God. So you're seeing the word seen in the same way when they're applied in different ways, okay? Um, on the issue of Bible, uh, on the issue of uh, uh, cont I, I, if you people could just stay still, right? On the issue of, how many minutes? Three, on the issue of uh, Bible verses and things like that, we have the Codex Alexandrius, we have Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Vianaticus, we have the Hebrew Maserati text, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, we have the Septuagint, the Latin Vulgate. All these conspire to show that our text doesn't change, bro. Alright? Which we'll get into. There are textual variants within the Quran. There have been changes in the Quran. It says in Azo Suti, I can't pronounce that. Al Itak Fit Uthman Al Quran, page 524, it says, Let none of you say I have acquired the whole of the Quran. How does he know 
what all of it is when much of the Quran has disappeared. Rather, let him say, I have acquired what has survived. So that's an ancient source in a hadith that's admitting that all that some of the Quran has been lost. We can go on in uh, Sayyid Muslim. We used to recite the surah which resembled in length the severity surah, Barak. I have however forgotten it. I've forgotten it. With the exception of this which I remember of it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. Sayyid Muslim, volume 2, page 501. So here we've seen, we've seen that verses have been lost in the Quran. So how can the Quran be the word of God if verses have been lost? We can go, uh, what, how many? A minute and a half. Sayyid Muslim, volume 2, page 501. And we used to recite a surah. These are Muslim ancient re uh, research that they agree with. And we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of Mus Sabat. And I have forgotten it. But remember this much out of it. O oh, people who believe, why do you say that which do you not practice? Surah 61 2. And that is recorded in your necks as a witness against you. And you will be asked about it on the day of resurrection. Surah 17 13. So he says, and we used to recite the surah which resembled one of the surahs of Musa. And I have forgotten it. So surahs and parts of the Quran in ancient sources of Sayyid Muslim, which is very, very authentic for the Muslims, say that verses and parts of the Quran have been lost. So how can that be the Quran of the Word of God if, it, if parts of it have been lost? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Yeah, you see this guy here. I want to prove, bring the proof. The Quran was committed to memory before it was even written. They are committed to memory. And today millions of Muslims are committed to Quran to memory. They are called Hafiz, the preservers. Now, if all, all the Quran today disappear, you know, millions of Muslims will sit down and produce it. Verbatim. Word by word, letter by word, letter. You see what I mean? We want to see your proof. I've got the Bible here, open as your contradictions. When I quote it, you can check it out. You can say, stop, let me check it out. I want to see, you know what's from that, where you get that from? Bring it and show us these are the contradictions. This thing is for two Quran as you come here, you and Bob and all you hate preachers, you come here. Like I told you last time. Oh, Your different Quran, you got two Qurans, bring it. I've got different Bibles here. I say it's one. 114 surahs, 6,206 verses. No addition, no deletion. Bring a Quran that's got more than 114 surahs or less. Or has got more than 6,236 verses or less. You want to see? So let's carry on your contradiction. Next contradiction here. Has anyone ascended into heaven apart from Jesus? If anyone else ascended into heaven, among the Jesus, the Bible says no and yes. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 13 says, no one has ascended into heaven except Jesus. But in the second book of Kings, chapter number 2, verse number 11 says, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So which one is it? According to John, no one else has ascended into heaven apart from Jesus, peace upon him. But according to second Kings, Elijah went up by a while we need to have him. Which one is it? Furthermore, if you read the Bible, another contradiction is, what was Jesus' instruction to his disciples? What was Jesus' instruction to his disciples? The contradiction here is between the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 28, verse number 10, it says, Tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. But in the Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse number 7, he said, Go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Which one is it? Who is right there? Was it Luke? Or was it Matthew or John? Next contradiction. How did Simon Peter find out that Jesus was the Christ? How did Simon Peter find out that Jesus was the Christ? Now the contradiction here yeah, is between the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 17, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 16, verse number 7, he said, by a revelation from heaven. Simon Peter found out that Jesus was the Christ by a revelation from heaven. But John disagreed. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 
41 says his brother Andrew told him. So which one is it? The Simon Peter find out that Jesus of Christ, according to uh, Matthew, by a revelation from heaven, or according to John, from his brother Andrew. A blatant and incontrovertible, indisputable contradiction. You can find that in the Quran. Next contradiction. Who was the father of Joseph? The husband of Mary. Who was the father of Joseph? The husband of Mary. Here, the contradiction is between the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 16, he says that Jacob was the father of Joseph. According to Matthew, Joseph was the father of uh, Jacob was the father of Joseph. Joseph. But according to Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter number 3, verse number 23, says, Heli was the father of Joseph. So which one is it? I want to know. These are blatant contradictions in the Bible. And God is not author of confusion. That's what the Bible said. In the first Corinthians, chapter 14, verse number 23. For God is not an author of confusion. But this confusion here. Which one is it? You want to know? So many contradictions. I'll carry on now. Next contradiction here is... Is it finished? 25 seconds. Go, go. Okay, first of all, did you notice when I said there are verses missing in the Quran? He didn't tackle me on textual criticism. He ran away from that and he said the Quran has been memorized by Muhammad and passed on by memorization. I have here in uh, Sayyid Bukhari, volume 6, 61, 556, five, Sayyid Bukhari, volume 6, 61, 513, Sunni Abu Dawud, volume 3, 1015. All these hadiths show that Muhammad couldn't rem remember the Quran. Sunni uh, Sayyid al Bukhari, volume 661, 514. Uh, Sayyid al Bukhari, volume 661, 509. Sunni al Tami, volume uh, 103, 103. Um, Sayyid Bukhari, volume 660, 468. Sayyid Bukhari, volume 660, 467. Sayyid Muslim, volume 9, uh, uh, volume number 7, 4, 17, 99, 1802. Sayyid Bukhari, volume 661, 527. All these uh, hadiths show that Muhammad and his companions couldn't me memorize and couldn't remember the Quran. So not only had you lost verses, this idea that there's a chain of narration going on and on and on, and they could remember, they got a worse memory than me. Because I can't remember half of the contradictions he came up with. They couldn't remember. So this protection of the Quran is false. There were verses missing right at the beginning. He's not dealt with that. I've talked about contradictions. He's not dealt with those contradictions. I can't remember half of the contradictions you're talking about, but I'll try to deal with some of them. About Mary and Joseph. Uh, Matthew and Luke, they deal with... Uh, one deals with Joseph's lineage, one deals with Mary's lineage. And if you try to confuse the two, you're going to get confused about what he's talking about, Joseph's lineage. You've got to get the right book for the right lineage of Joseph. And I, I can't remember half of these, these contradictions. Can you remember that, any of them? You can, you can go later, you can go, you upload it, you can go there. I'm a bit tired, so. No, not tired, I'm finish it. And I'm going to Oh, the accession no, no. to heaven. After we Elijah, finish. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. Elijah went on, Elijah, Never used the word accension. Elijah went on a chariot of fire. Accension is the final going to the Father. So accension is different from what Elijah did. Okay? So you're mixing the two. There's no word that Elijah uses in Kings about accension. So you're twisting the word. You've got to read it now. I quote it. You okay. got it wrong. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. I didn't say Elijah said it. Read it. Again and answer that okay. Wait, it's, second book it's my time. It's my time. It's time. It's my time. Can you remember any others? Because I can't sorry, remember. Sorry. I can't remember any of those because I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't realize you both had your own time. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So these ancient manuscripts of the Quran have been written over. When you look at these Qurans, these ancient Qurans that go back to the time of Uthman, when you look at these Qurans that have been written over, they're not the same. The Uthman text is not the same as even ancient texts before that. So how can the Quran be the word of God when you have different ancient Qurans that are not the same? Secondly, a minute left. Uh, secondly, in the Sana manuscripts, which are a thousand, we have in the Sana manuscript image 142213B and 44828 of variant readings. In other words, there are thousands of variant readings in these Sana manuscripts. Not one of them is the same. So how can it be the how can the Quran be the word of God when these ancient manuscripts are all different from each other? I'll finish.